I also, when I was there, uh, was sent to, uh, or they wanted me to work in what is called the Human Goals Office. This was my beginning of, of affirmative action, uh, race relations. The office, it, uh, the drug and alcohol, um, equal opportunity. Uh, and my response, with the master chief uh, that I work for in that office, oh, my mentor, I love this man. I, in fact, I still stay in touch with his wife. He's gone. Uh, one, another friend that from Vietnam, Agent Orange, destroyed your health, kidneys, cancer, whatever. Um, but anyway, <laughs> we would do the lectures and the seminars. And back then, because I was still so, uh, I had my uh, 21st birthday in, in, in the Philippines. I didn't understand the repercussions of for affirmative action like I can today and what happened in the military because of it and them now, in 2023, realizing it was not a good thing. Um, we, you can't be an individual. I mean, you can, you can, certain things, but you have to operate as a team. You can't be a I, 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 I person. Uh, you need to trust the person that's next to you to have your back. Uh, and and they, they've taken that away, and that's kind of a scary thing. But anyway, I, I, did, I did the lectures. Everybody was required to go. And we even went up to Angeles City, close to Clark. We had to do them there. And um, I, I, I liked it. Like I said, at the time, I, I, I wasn't aware of the problems that it would create later on. Uh, and, and the Master Chief, <laughs> Master Chief James McGowan, I'll never oh God, I love that man. And it's been, back then, one of the things in the military is people that are older than you will take you in as part of their family for holidays, um, birthday, everything. I even babysat his kids. They're adults with kids of their own and still remember me. <laughs> um, that's where I got the attitude, I want to give back what was done for me, and which I was able to do later on. Um, but uh, just the way that he, com his presence and the respect that he got, I, w I, just, I said, I want to be like him. I, I want people to, I want to, I want to be able to make a difference in people's lives for the good. I, you know, help uh, grow in their career, grow in, as a person, whatever. Um, but back then, I said, still, I said, I, I hadn't even turned 21 yet. These were ideas that kind of came later on. Um, Subic, or I was at uh, NAVCOM Stay San Miguel. It was probably Philippines. It was probably about 45 minutes, an hour away from Subic. <clears throat> where, that's where all the bars and the music and where everybody went. Or Subic City, where... I'll get to that a little bit. People, well, guys went for other things. <laughs> um, but our base, we had, a, we, had, we had a long access road to the base, and there were, there were a few bars outside of there. And back then, it was martial law, so you had to be off the streets by 12. Um, Marcos was in charge. I don't know if you all, probably too young, the stories about Amelda, his wife, and all the, her shoes. <laughs> Um, the new people's army things you know you had to be those things you had to be careful of um, because Subic was so far from my base if I went down there I basically had to plan on not going getting off the street and not going back where I lived overnight and sometimes again I did a lot of drinking back then too but the gals that um, worked in the bars they come Come, they actually they looked out for me. They get me off the street, take me to their house for the night. 
or if guys that were trouble or bothering me, they'd throw them out. I never, I never had a problem like some of the other uh, American women. Um, again, you can't be judgmental. They're people. Um, and they weren't used to um, American round eyes <laughs> being out, out in town. Um, I didn't see it so much in Japan as the Philippines, such a poor country. I mean, where they, they have nothing, dirt, dirt floors, you know, in their places. Um, but so happy, you know, they just, they're family oriented, taking care of each other. Um, their values are so different than they are in America as far as family. You know, they would never consider putting a grandparent in a home or, in, you know, somewhere where they didn't have to think about them. They're, they stay with them. Um, I learned how to cook a lot of uh, Filipino food, which I loved, and my kids too, to this day. Um, if, if you want, I am a foodie. I like food, all kinds. I will try anything. Um, I've tried some things where I knew I was never going to have it again. <laughs> Um, but if you've never had pancit or lumpia or chicken adobo or pork adobo, uh, you're really missing out. Or you can come visit me. I'm a good cook. <laughs> I was in the Philippines two years. Uh, I actually cried when I had to leave there because I just loved it. The weather, the, uh, the people, um, the job, um, even though I really wasn't doing a lot in communications at the time. But when it was time to go, I had to make decisions. Uh, so with my career, was I, I was a second class. Uh, was I going to stay in, get out? You know, I, uh, so I figured I was pretty good at what I was doing and didn't have much to worry about. So I, I told you before, I love the technical end of my, of, of my job. So I got a guaranteed school uh, for, uh, tech, for technical control to get an NEC which is other services call MOS, it's a job code. Um, that no matter where I went, I knew I was gonna go into a technical control facility. And uh, so that was in San Diego. Um, I had a, it's a rude, rude awakening from going from the Philippines and not having to do anything for myself to San Diego where things were a lot more expensive. <laughs> but things kind of worked out for me there too. I didn't, um, have to live in the barracks because remember I told you about my friend Patty from Montana? She was there and lived off base and had a house, so I had a place to move. It's a good thing you always think about your shipmates. They're always there for you uh, nine times out of ten. So uh, I went to, actually, I, I, I went to two schools there. I went, I went to, it was for radio men, just, it was a, called a 2313. It was just, um, just a higher level uh, education of what we did, but then I got my 23, 18 and 19, which is technical control. So I was there from, I think it was like sep August uh, of, sep of 76 to April of uh, 77. I, I'm not real good when it comes to math, I struggle. <laughs> Um, I, I was the only woman in the class. <laughs> um, the guys were great. They um, spent a lot of time with me afterwards study and trying to help me get through to pass the test. And I, and, and I succeeded. Well, one time, <laughs> this, we, knew, we knew we were going to um, graduate, uh, well, getting close to it. And this was a really rough test. And I got through it, did well. We needed to go to the club. <laughs> well, we start all, all of us started drinking, and uh, I don't know what time I got home. And uh, I was supposed to go horseback riding or something with Patty the next day, and she's knocking on the drive. And I had such a hangover, and uh, she said, "Get up, get up!" And I said, "What?" She said, "We gotta go." And she and I felt something on my ass, and I said, "What the hell?" And I see this white patch. She goes, you don't want to look. I said, what? Well, the guys decided to give me something to remember them by, and I got tattooed and with a USDA-approved <laughs> tattoo on my ass. 
<laughs> I'll never forget when I went back to class and couldn't be itches, you know, you start shifting around. Hey, Obi, what's up? What's wrong? I said, you assholes. <laughs> oh, so, and then at the time I didn't see it as a downfall. Uh, I met this guy who I had actually met in the Philippines. Um, I was out partying, and he was in San Diego and uh, in, a, in a club there. I started talking. He asked me out. And so he ends up moving, basically staying. Oh, I would be with his house. He was living with this guy, other guy, and to, to our house. And um, he was coming up for orders, and, and, and I was too. And... I think more because to stay together and get orders together, we got married and I was stupid enough to think I was in love. <laughs> so we got orders to Siganella, Sicily. Um, oh, I love Sicily. Um, I'm, I'm Italian. I know with a name like O'Brien, how are you Italian? <laughs> well, my grandparents on my mother's side came from Italy. and. Uh, my mother, her name is Lucia Josephine Vitrella O'Brien. <laughs> um, I just, s such an opposite of Westpac. The med, med sailors are candy ass sailors compared to Westpac sailors. They don't know, they don't know what, how, they don't know what a real sailor is. They haven't been to Westpac. Um, so I got there first. Uh, um, things in, in my relationship, my marriage, you know, start, of course it started out good. And, and we partied and we drank. And then I ended up, uh, I got pregnant with my daughter. And uh, you, you have to make changes, you know. And so and I, I wasn't drinking or partying the way I was. Um, he, it, it just, when you don't know somebody that well in the beginning, th things really sometimes don't get any better, they get worse. And then you just try to, to, to make it better, and sometimes you, doing that you make it worse. It was just, from the, from the get-go after a few months, was not good. But then when I got pregnant, I said, oh, you know, I'm going to try to make this work. Well, I, after... Um, when Jennifer was born, I said, well, you know, I can't party, I can't drink. What if there's an emergency? I need to get her to the hospital, blah, blah, blah. And he just, he just continued and ended up uh, being with him for way too many years um, and taking abuse. Um, but that's another story. I did love Sicily. I would, it was a, a NAVCOM debt Siganella. It was just a small communication station. Naples was the big one. Um, there's so, there, there's so much history and so much to see. Uh, Palermo, um, Agrigento, Terramino was my most favorite up in the mountains. You could look out over the water and they made almond wine. <laughs> um, the Trotterias. Oh, I'll never forget when I, I went <laughs> to this Trotteria. Um, it was the first time. And uh, I understand a little bit of Italian because my grandmother lived with us and she spoke Italian. And but. Uh, I could understand more than probably what I could speak. But anyway, I, I look over at this other tape, because you know how when you don't know what to get and you're looking at other people's plates, this, this lady um, was eating, looked like onion rings. I said, oh man, I want some of those. So I just pointed, I didn't know what calamari was. <laughs> I'm bit into them. So, like, so that was my introduction, first time to calamari, but uh, the food, oh my goodness, the food, the pastas and the, the, the fresh cheese and oh my, their pizzas are nothing like they are in America, I hope you know. Their pizzas are, uh, are kind of like you see the oil floating on the top, they can have peas, uh, um, eggs, uh, ham, well ham we have, but stuff, and their black olives are not like our black olives, they're very, very sour. But, but they are good if you become accustomed to it.